And welcome to the eighth round of the World Endurance Championship here in Shanghai. Very sunny day, quite warm temperatures, but quite a wind blowing around what is going to be a very exciting, but also rather intense qualifying session coming up in a few minutes. Had three sessions so far, two yesterday and uh, then one this morning. And it's sort of throwing up a few curveballs for a few of the drivers because this circuit with such a long back straight, 1,300 meters, but also a big percentage of the track is corners, long, fast corners, put so much energy into the tires. And that's going to be a big talk talking point, especially in the six hour race tomorrow. However, now it's about the short, sharp burst for qualifying. Here we are on the schedule, round eight, Shanghai, only Bahrain to go. However, all titles still up for grabs in the driver's title. GTE is going to be first, and that's going to be, I think, one of the titles that will go down to the wire. Alan McNish here in the commentary box, and down in the pit lane, we've got Louise Beckett. And Louise is in the sunshine right at this moment. We can see some circuit work that went on, and that is because uh, the track actually broke up a little bit in free practice three this morning. So therefore they had to stop the session early and then to replace some concrete, which is now set in. And so it'll be fine for the qualifying to start. GTE Pro Battle is one part of it, but also GTE Am is another. We saw the Proton Porsches sitting there as Andy Prio is getting his helmet on. That, that car was leading the championship up until the last round in Fuji when they had a very tough one and now dropped down to fifth in the Drivers' Championship. So close as it is at the front of there. The four GTs resplendent going out. 66 in front, 67 behind Prio and Tinkle in the 60. Seven car. As you can see there on the graphic, it's not fantastically warm here in Shanghai. Sun is shining, it is getting warmer, but with air temperatures of 14 and track temperature, and that's the key thing, track temperature of only 16 degrees, significantly less than we saw earlier in the week. We're standing our commentary box right in the top of that fantastic pit building that looks over the start and finish straight and then out into the circuit. I said at the beginning it was quite a fast and flowing section of circuit there. That's turns seven and eight we were looking at. Two thirds of this track is turning left or turning right. And so therefore putting a lot of emphasis onto that tire. The 86 Porsche, that's in the Pro-Am category and uh, that car is going to be started, I think, by Al Kassiwi. And uh, he's in a position, and uh, there we see our good pit lane reporter. He's going to be uh, starting it, Al Kabezi. And Louise in the pit lane has got some information about him. Louise? Well, yeah, of course, Khaled Al Kabezi has swapped teams for this one, or he's stepping in for Mike Wainwright. So usually we've seen him in the 77. Proton, but now he's with the uh, Golf Racing for Shanghai. Well, both in a Porsche, and uh, that is uh, it's going to be a little bit easier, but learning to get into another team. And now I've been joined in the comms box, running up to the heady heights of uh, the sixth six floor six. here. <laughs> six foot six and on the sixth floor, the one and only man. Hello. Uh, you can have one of them. Uh, Well, you've seen now that uh, Eduardo Freitas is making a final inspection of uh, of the circuit just to make sure those concrete patches that were put in uh, between corner two and three have been successfully set. And it looks as though they're fairly happy with that. Obviously, the one problem with that is that big fat slicks do tend to pull things out of the ground. Yeah, but at that point on the circuit, it's the downhill left-hander between turn two and turn three. And I think it's more as the wheel is cutting down. And what we noticed when we were out there watching free practice one yesterday was that they're actually cutting more this year than they did last year. The circuit line, and it might be with the wind as well being a factor, but uh, they were able to cut and then keep much tighter on the apex. And that's the GT cars pr um, predominantly more than anyone else. Everybody making their final preparations to go out for the start of qualifying. And the tyre stack has been taken away that was put in place to protect the concrete 
uh, by uh, for, during the Porsche race. Uh, one or more of the support races due this afternoon to decide the fate of the Carrera Cup Asia at championship. A three-way battle between 2015 champion Chris van der Drift, Will Bamber, younger brother of Earl, and uh, Martin Ragging, a former Porsche junior driver. So that will go on later on this afternoon once qualifying is finished. But Alan, even though we have got those cars as a sport race, even though the cars were out yesterday on track, doesn't seem to be an awful lot of rubbering in going on the circuit. It's still a fairly slippery track. And this track is that sort of odd combination that you get quite often of low grip but high wear. It's got a very different aggregate kind of mix in it to a, a, a track that you tend to see in Europe because of, I guess, what, what is available locally. Well, the circuit was built quite a few years ago now, over 10 years ago, but uh, you're right, it's got quite a smooth surface. Uh, however, with all the fast corners, especially in that sector two, uh, as we see there, and also including the first corner, to be honest with you, because it's so, so long that it puts a lot of energy into the tire. It also has got lateral load, which means that the tire slides across the top of the surface, and that gives it the wear. So we're going to have tire drop off in terms of performance in the race. We're also going to have wear issues as well. Uh, and uh, you're also going to have a third thing called pickup. When uh, you overtake another car and you get some of that rubber that's deposited at the side of the track gluing onto your tire, which then gives vibrations, loses performance, and it's a downward spiral from there. So I'm sure we are going to be talking about it, but right now we're going to be talking about one lap. And that one lap is going to be key because the thing about it is that when you've got that sort of wear and this surface characteristic and everything else, it means that the pure performance on a new tire is on that one lap and there's a big drop in performance for laps two and three so unlike maybe uh, fuji where we're looking at the second and the third lap as possibles i don't think we're going to see that here i think you're going to see one lap band size and does that mean that we're going to see the team fitting a second set of fresh tires for the second driver because if you don't, you're going to be on a hiding to nothing, really, aren't you? Yeah, I think you'll see more often that happening here than we would. We've seen that in LMP1, but uh, maybe a little bit less in the other categories. But I think it's going to be something that's a bit more predominant up and down the pit lane because of that. Now, they are very restricted for their tyres tomorrow, but I don't think it's going to be the critical thing in terms of doing you know, three extra laps. We're talking yeah. about an out lap, we're talking about a qualifying lap and an in lap for the wear, but it does definitely have a big factor in pure performance. It's definitely not going to, those extra three laps aren't going to kill your tyre for the second hour that it's on the car, it's the second hour that it's on the car that's going to make the big difference. So if you give away that speed in qualifying, then you will just make your life a little harder when the tyre is fresh at the beginning of the racing. So everybody waiting for the tyres to go on. In fact, only the Clearwater Ferrari has started mounting its tyres. So that local car, locally based uh, driver lineup anyway, getting ready to go out right at the front of the queue. None of the Aston Martins, neither the Air Corsa Ferraris, or the Spirit of Race Ferrari have got their tyres on, nor have the Porsches, nor have the Fords. So one minute under one minute to open the pit lane. Under one minute to open the pit lane. Extra careful at the apex of T3, please, gentlemen. Don't violate the inside of the turn very hard because we may go into damage and mess up the whole session. I think that's uh, a message from Eduardo Freitas, the race director, trying to be careful not to damage his brand new concrete. But I know that if I was sitting in the car, and it was going to be a two, two tenths quicker, and it's the difference between the point for pole position Under or not. Under 30 seconds to go green. Under 30 seconds to go green. Point for pole position or not, and that point could win me a world championship. I would do it without a shadow of a doubt. So but I think that's maybe a little bit of a, a hopeful request as opposed to anything else. And, and the other thing then is that you might want to get out quick Ten. and get your first driver's lap in get your second driver's lap in quickly before Five, the service deteriorates. Three, two, one. Yep, well, I think one. you need to do that anyway. Qualifying for LMGT cars has started. Qualifying if, for LMGT cars has started. If you then deliberately started. cut the corner, you may end up making it worse for some of your rivals, and particularly, potentially, inflict some tyre damage on them. Out, out of the pits have gone the 67 Ford. You saw the 77 Porsche going out, the 86 Porsche as well. Khalid al Kabasi in the car this weekend. Richard Leeds in the 91 Porsche as well. Talking on the way over with Nick Tandy about 
the IMSA Porsche is running 911 and 912. And I wondered if there was actually a legislation in FIA racing that you couldn't have triple digits. Because you could easily have, if it as much as 91, it could easily be 911 on the Porsche and 912. And then Aston Martin probably couldn't use 007, but they probably could. Doing some other racing series, like yeah. in the, the US, then uh, the Aston Martins do run with 007 yep. on that, but uh, certainly not here. From our lofty perch up above the grandstand, nine floors up in, well, we're actually six floors up on this side of the track, nine floors up on the pit lane side of the track, which is quite a bizarre numbering system, but uh, we've got a great view of proceedings. Pit lane starting to empty, the Ferraris will be last out. Yeah, well, the, yeah, of course the Ferraris will be last out anyway, the pro cars. And Louise is down there in front of them. Louise, is there anything or are they just uh, playing tactics? No, I think they're just waiting for um, the rest of the pack to get out. I will go and ask the team, we'll put a fresh set on obviously, and the 71's being pushed out now. As 71 you... by David Rigon at yep. the wheel of that car as we see now. He is just starting to go out. I, th I think it's more about trying to get tra clear track and track position than anything else. It wasn't uh, waiting too long, but they've roughly waited until the first car, which is one of the Fords, comes out of the final corner and then crosses the line, as you see there. So that is going to be tricky because that is going to actually create a problem for the Ford as he turns into turn one. I well, think that's a bit naughty, to be honest with you. And the problem there is... That is naughty. If they do that to Ford, the Ford will be on its slowing down lap, and so will everybody else, when the Ferraris are trying to do their quick lap. Yeah. So they've really mistimed that. Well, they haven't, because what they've done is they've already messed up the Ford's fastest lap. And as we know, the first lap is the fastest lap, and they, that was not... Uh, well, put on this, all fairs love and war, but that says war to me. Andy Prio will return that favour because he'll finish his fast lap just as the Ferraris are trying to start theirs and they might find it difficult to get around the Ford into turn one and two. I've had it here before where you have that situation and you know that the lap's gone before you even turn into the first corner and he knows now that his next lap is going to be massively compromised even if he goes very, very slowly to try to keep some life into the tyre. But, uh, yeah, you could call it misjudgment or you could call it very clear calculation. Whichever way it was, it's... Uh, certainly compromised massively the championship contender being the 67 car there yeah. by the other championship contender being the Ferrari that went out in front of it. Harry Tickle waiting his turn. No question as to which of the drivers goes in the pro class. It's two driver lineup, so both drivers go. In a three driver car, you choose which two. You have a gentleman driver, then the gentleman driver must run. A two driver lineup at us with Ford there, then both have got to run. Exactly. And it's the average of the each driver's best lap combined that gives you the position on the grid. On board with the 91 Porsche. That is the car being driven by Richard Leitz. This is a 1,300 metres of back straight, very quick onto the back straight as well because you accelerate out of tight turn 12 through the flat out turn 13 and then hard, hard braking down to 40 miles per hour, 60 kilometers per hour into this corner. In fact, there, a GT car and an LMP1 at exactly the same speed. It's just when you get up to like to this, the final corner of the circuit, where you throw the car into the corner, have to hit that curb on the inside or you run wide onto the AstroTurf on the right-hand side. That's where you see the big difference in performance between the different categories. 272 from the GT Porsche at the end of the straight, and the LMP1 cars will be topping out at almost exactly the same speed. P2 cars will be faster, they'll accelerate further along the straight. And if they had a stiff breeze like they did yesterday behind them, that'll be pushing them right up against the limiter and probably beyond. Michael Christensen goes top ahead of Richard Leitz. Andy Prio has completed his lap 6.8 seconds behind. 6.8 seconds because of uh, that situation with the Ferrari at the first yeah. corner of his flying lap. But that lap time of uh, Christensen is quicker than anybody has done this morning. Fastest overall this morning was the Aston Martin 
of uh, Nicky Team and Sorensen there on a 59.8, but uh, he's been able to beat that already by three tenths of a second. Backed up, in fact, Christensen's gone quickest. Sorensen has now popped himself up into 59.8 in second. Yeah. The Aston Martins were fast in free practice yesterday. There's the Spirit of Race Ferrari in the AM class. And that's 54 car Miguel Molina just drifting out wide, just keeping two wheels on the right side of the paint, or the left hand side, but the correct side of the paint. And so that is a legal exit. If you go all four wheels off, then and if you continue to do it in the race, you will be in trouble. Uh, starting another lap, but this is already quite a chunk off. The tyre drop off quite significant. And as Prio has popped himself up at two minutes three, but that's down in sixth place for the Ford. And his teammate uh, is uh, Olivier Pla is up into fourth place. And so that's eight tenths behind the fastest Porsche time, which means that to balance it out, Harry Tinkle has to find 16 tenths. Six Ford has completed its lap cleanly, and uh, there might be a little meandering down to AF Corsa after the session and a bit of finger poking in the chest, going, What on earth was that about? It's kind of difficult after the session, it's already done and dusted. Yeah, you, know? you, you can't do it beforehand because you don't know they're going to trip you up and tie your shoelaces yeah. together. I think in that situation, I think the discussion's probably during the session, is what I was meaning. No, I agree. So there's uh, there we're so it, that's a 66 car that's a Livy Pla that is at the wheel of that car. And, uh, we suspect that he will come into the pits. Yeah, straight in. Then the tight 90 degree left hander as he's finished his time 12 minutes and 30 seconds to go. In fact, car 61 though has had his lap deleted through track limits abuse at turn 13. That's walk in uh, the Ferrari 61. That's an odd place, turn 13, because that's leading on to the back yeah. straight. So, so he obviously ran out wider coming out there. A wide, I think he must have run out wider than yeah, wide. Yeah. Exactly. Well, only, it's a qualifying lap, and everybody knows there's one lap, and so if you run out wide, you're going to lose your lap. Miguel Molina has lost his, and again at turn 13, not turn 16, the final corner. Oh, that was very close indeed. That was flirting with a reprimand or a loss of a lap. That's uh, exactly the corner that normally we've seen uh, the race director, Eduardo Freitas, pointing the finger and just saying, look, guys, be careful, turn 16, the final corner. Uh, turn 13 is not one that historically we've had uh, very many warnings about. Now, that's Davide Rigon in the 71 Ferrari. We didn't see him through the whole lap, but in fact, that lap was slower than Andy Prio's. Prio did a two minute flat 0 0.320, that's a two minute 0 0.370. Five hundreds of a second slower than the impeded Ford. James Collado's 51 Ferrari is in. New daddy. After a couple of weeks, you're still new daddy, aren't you? Feed it for months. And there is Wengs from Mock, who's going to have to go and get another lap in. You you don't necessarily have to do it now. We've seen before when laps have been deleted, it's handed over to the second driver, and then at the end of the session, driver one goes back in again. Or if you don't get a clean lap, driver one can, can go back in again. You're not one and done. You can do it in whatever number of laps you want at whatever time you want. This is now Nicky Team, uh, the sister driver uh, to Sonson, and they were very fast, as you said yesterday. Uh, second quickest overall uh, and quickest car this morning. But he's doing a very slow outlap. You can yeah. see how much he was babying that Dunlop tyre as he came through his turn one. So uh, there's the Porsche 91 that uh, currently is sitting with Machiavelli at the wheel down in fifth position though. As he runs around the lot. This is a dreadful corner to feel. Try and get back to the apex there before you dip down the into turn two. That's exactly what Eduardo Freitas was asking them not to do. 
cut to the inside part of it. He was doing, it was acceptable, it was legal and everything was fine and above board, but that was where the concrete had to be relayed this morning after free practice three. Now there, the car that lost its time, the Clearwater Racing Ferrari, has now gone back out with Matteo Cairoli at the wheel. So he's in the 77 car. He's gone back out. And so he's going to do his lap. And then, uh, beg your pardon, it's the 61 car that lost the lap, isn't it? So that's Matt Griffin at the wheel of that car now. So he has gone out to do his lap. And then they'll come back in and when some mock will go and have to do another lap because a deleted lap is going to leave you at the back of the field. You may as well go and do one more and try and actually move yourself a little further up the order. Coming into this long turn 12 and turn 13 is now where they are right now. So it's in the exit of this corner where the laps have been deleted for running wide there. Like that? Yeah, but that's the camera angle is more than anything else in that particular shot there. But it's running over the curve on the other side out of uh, turn 13. Looks like grass there in the outside, but it's not. And so you've got plenty of grip. Yeah, some of the corner exits are green painted concrete and then turn into AstroTurf. As you come out of corner 16, the final corner, the first bit of green is brand new AstroTurf and the second bit of green is elderly AstroTurf. So you can see there's a slightly different green. And that was, a, again, a clean exit. In fact, uh, Macchio Vecchi, you're right, it wasn't just the camera angle because he's just had that lap time deleted for track abuse at turn 13. Now, in a race, you get a warning for constant track abuse, but since everybody knows it's going to be a single flying lap, you don't get any chances here. <laughs> 71 is in. Davide Regan handing over to Sam Bird. So 91 Porsche will have to go and do another lap. And Makovecki's lap had the car in fifth position. Now, not, that lap will not stand, so we'll have to go again and try again. 51 Ferrari, Alessandro Pierre Guidi now on his flying lap. Harry Tingle on his out lap. Sam Bird just left the pits in the 71 car. Here's the Clearwater Racing Ferrari. Matt Griffin in the 61 car. 201.859 from him. John Gore, the head of the Aston Martin racing programme in the garage there, enjoying the fact that Nicky Team and Marco Sorensen have currently gone to the top of the tree in the pro class. 95 Aston, currently the fastest car. Alessandro Pierre Guidi has something to say, still in 51 Ferrari that's second. Kevin Estre, mm, he's done a 2 minute 0 0.2 lap, which is. Three tenths, slur, three tenths, not even three hundred, three tenths slower than his teammate did in the 92 Porsche. 97. With Darren Turner doing a 201.8, and they did a 201.1 on their first lap in the 97 Aston. That was Johnny Adams' lap. Here's the AM class Porsche Matteo Cairoli. Oh, four wheels off, corner 16. Now, it's not just one corner that's being watched. Because, yeah. Alan, by running out wide there, you keep your momentum up, you kill the understeer, and no, you, you gain keep, an advantage. You keep your momentum up. That's the thing. And the start-finish line is so close to the, the actual end of the corner that even if uh, you lose a little bit on acceleration, you gain so much more in mid-corner momentum. But uh, it's an overall gain. 91 Porsche fueled to go out for another lap with Fred Makabiki. 92 heading into the pit lane as well. Now they're third at the moment, but Kevin Estra, like I said, three tenths slow. The question is, is he actually going to find another three tenths? Yeah, the thing after is. After they've taken a lap out of the tyre. Yep. He's uh, done a two minute 254, which is seven tenths slower than his teammate was able to do at yeah. the beginning. So. He's 60, got a bit to find there. 61 Clearwater Ferrari is in. Matt Griffin will bail out, and Wang Sun Mok will possibly go back in. Unless well, he has been, he has still got time on the screen, Mok. So it's not their only lap that's been deleted. 
It's uh, Darren Turner, the sister car to the quickest overall in the category of Nicky Team. And uh, he's, he's now starting his flying lap. Well, he's uh, Johnny Adam did a 2 minute 0 0.5. Darren's done a 2 minute 1.7. 67 Ford here of Harry Tignall. Andy Prio's lap was a 2 minute 0 0.3. So Harry needs to get down. If Harry could find a second, that would <laughs> that would. Fall I, yeah, you just say that. If Harry could find a second, well, over Andy, who was badly held up. Yeah, a little bit easier to say than do. <laughs> Got to yeah, be honest yeah. with you. And uh, that's him coming down into the hairpin, one corner to go. And he needs a nice, a clean up. exit. Oh, did he just shoot into the pits? Uh, one of them did, no, it was the Crossing 66. The <laughs> so Tinkle's six aid, uh, faster first and third, uh, second, sorry, first and third sector of the car so far, but not the middle sector. Uh, so that drops them into six. I think they're going to struggle, to be honest, to come back from uh, the penalty of the first driver with three minutes, 30 seconds. I don't think Andy Prio is going to get back in the car. I don't think there'll be very much reason to actually stick him back in the car because the game would be so good. Three minutes 24 to take the Ferrari team off their Christmas card list. Yeah. I mean, that's about all you can do in the situation now. Championship leader Pierre Guidi pops up into fourth place in that Ferrari right now. It's a two minutes 0 0.59. Has anybody, any of the second drivers gone quicker than the first drivers? Yeah, you've had team who's gone quicker than his teammate by uh, three tenths yeah. of a second, and so that's helped it. But everybody else has roughly done yeah. the same sort of time uh, or slightly slower. Ah, time deleted for car 54, which is our current AM pole sitting Ferrari. That's the silver Spirit of race car. So Thomas Floor flaunting. <laughs> Let's see what I did there at the exit of turn 16. Yeah, and this is uh, Harry Tinknell again in the Ford, and he's gone quicker again in the first sector. And this is him now coming through the second sector, which was where he lost a little bit of time. It's not the car's fastest uh, through there, and then the final sector was where he was quick as well. So they'll be hoping to gain a little bit. It's more against their teammates who are uh, just about a tenth of a second up the road and then it's two tenths up to Puerguini in the Ferrari and Macchio Vecchi in uh, the Porsche so it's going to have to be a pretty good last sector from Tignal to be able to make that particular jump nice and line just inside as he crosses uh, to finish the lap and yes he does go ahead of Mucha in the other Ford so they're winning the Ford battle but uh, it's now half a tenth of a second behind uh, the next card up the road, which is that Ferrari of Guidi, the one without the Christmas card. Indeed. So Aston fastest. That looks like they have pole in the pro class. This is Thomas Floor putting in another lap in the 54 car that's currently got pole in the AM class. And 0 0.70 behind, which drops them down to third place. And that means Aston Martin at the moment have two pole positions. So that lap from Thomas Floor that was deleted, the one that counts was a two minute 4.6. And that means Paul Dallalana and Pedro Lam in the 98 Aston have the AM class pole. So there's the Dane train on pole position in the pro class. Receiving congrats from John Gore. Nicky Team with the hair, Marco Sorensen without with the racer's haircut, the Marco Apicella look. Um, for those of you of a certain generation, then Marco Apicella was a fantastically quick racing driver in, uh, in fact, someone I raced against a lot in the yeah. early 90s and in Formula 3000, which is uh, now in its last iteration called Formula 2. But uh, anyway, that's something different. This is Macchio Vecchi, as now he comes through to 9, 10, and then up towards uh, the sort of long corners onto the back of the start, uh, sorry, the long back straight. Macchio Vecchi, though, down in sixth place right now. A second, 1.1 seconds off yeah. Nicky Team's time. 201.3, his last lap, checkered flag is out, so this is it. 
He might, what's their average? Four tenths, 45 hundreds, even to get in front of Stefan Mucha in the 66 forward. It's not happening, is it? I don't think this is going to happen for Maki Ovecchi. Not on a third lap on the tyre. There must be a bit of a difference here because Estra and the sister car to that uh, put in a pretty blinding lap time and it's up there in second, 59.5. Oh, it's just come in, so he shot straight in. And there are your pole sitters in the AM class, Paul Dallalana, Matthias Lauder again in the cap, and uh, Pedro Lamy in the centre there. So that's not a bad qualifying uh, session for Aston Martin at all, is it? No, nope. certainly pole position means point as well. Yeah. But uh, it doesn't mean anything for the race tomorrow because no, no. I think the limitation on the tyres that they have by regulations will mean that uh, there's got to be a lot of thought goes into uh, making sure you get the right setup for the car with the cambers and the pressures. But uh, right today, it's about these two guys. And they look rather happy or violent. A couple of Vikings, I would have said. Crazy Danskis. Well, let's get down with Louise Beckett to the Aston Martin garage and hear from our GTE Pro pole sitters, their Nikki team, and we'll hear from Marco Sorensen. Marco Sorensen, just getting the congratulations from the team there. That was a good run from both of you. For sure, for sure. It's always good to get the, get the pole position, and I think that we actually squeezed what we could out of the car uh, today. We were within two tenths of each other and I think we can be really satisfied with getting this pole um, but then again we have now we have to start focusing on the race because that's going to be a, a really hard one and this one was uh, more like a get this out of the way so we can get get to the race but really happy with my lap and I'm sure Nicky is happy with his lap so that's what brought us to this point. One point. One point. We need it in the championship don't we? Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Well this is Andy Prio's great maxim when he was a world touring car driver never let a single point escape never stay in sixth if you could get fifth because if you're a point behind at the end of the season and you're applauding somebody else mm, yeah every time you get in the car alan it's maximum performance every single time i would agree with that however they are 32 points behind uh, the championship leaders at the moment which is uh, pierre guidi and james calado in the 51 ferrari it's third on the grid well, let's get down to our other pole sitters in the GTE AM class, Paul Dallalana, and we'll hear from his teammate, Pedro Lamy. Well, this makes a nice change. I don't have to run down the pit lane to get to the next interview. So um, a great run from both of you. Yeah, it was great. I mean, uh, Paul, uh, once again, he made the difference. Uh, I mean, he did a very good lap and um, brought us to, to Paul. I mean, I was really close to all the other cars, a, a bit uh, one-tenth, a bit slower than the fastest, and Paul made the difference then, so he, he made the pole. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, it's a team effort, let's say. Yeah, uh, all but the, and all together, as you say, the Aston Martins have been strong here. Yeah, I mean, looks looks uh, good so far, but this track is very demanding for the tyres, so the long stints will decide the race. So hopefully we have a good car through all the race, and. Uh, do all the stints in a good rhythm. We'll see how how going to be comparing to the others. Thank you. Well Thank done. You. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's his point there was uh, the second stint because they will have to double stint tires, something that we've not historically done here at Shanghai because of performance. But because of tire allocation, we always had an extra set of tires by allocation to allow us to single stint the tires. However, that's not the case. Uh, tomorrow and so therefore that second stint is going to be the dictating factor in my opinion of a driver mistakes mm -hmm. and b the race result but uh, that's gte and G and gt am now we're on to lmp1 and lmp2 absolutely right so they will all go out for a 20 minute session exactly as we've just seen for the gt cars prototypes will go out lmp1 and lmp2 you can go out whenever you like but again two drivers must each set a time, and it is the average of their best laps. And best laps this morning was done by Toyota number seven, a one minute 44.888. Now we're in China, 
Eight is a very lucky number for the Chinese. Mm. 88 is even luckier, and 888 is even luckier than yeah. that. You can't pay money to get 888 on things, can you? There is our overall classification then after qualifying in the GT class in GTE Pro. Aston Martin racing number 95 ahead of the 92 Porsche and the 51 Ferrari. And in the GTE Am class as well, Aston Martin on the top of the pile. And as Pedro Lamy pointed out, it was a clean, quick lap by Paul Dallalana that made the difference. Most of the other gentlemen drivers made mistakes, cost themselves laps. Let's hear from the number two Porsche team. Very good, Carl. One, two. Uh, so a few of the GP guys had laps cancelled at turn 13, turn 16 uh, track limits. So it's track limits, turn 13, turn 16. Yeah, copy that. I don't think we'll have any problems with track limits unless it's overtaking a car uh, in turn 13 with the LMPs because they've got so much downforce that you don't need to go out there at all. Uh, turn 16 is a different matter. Nelson Piquet Jr. sitting the rebellion. They've been pretty quick actually following up on their performances in Fuji a couple of weeks ago then. Uh, they've been quite strong. Our timing screen shows that Nelson Piquet isn't in the car, however, no, he is. Our, our eyes show that he is, so uh, it will update itself as it heads out. Jose Maria Lopez checking the time. Neil Jarni and Timo Bernhardt going out in the number one and number two Porsche. We, uh, according to our thing, we just saw, uh, and then Mike Conway and Sebastian Buemi will qualify for Toyota. Looks like Pachito is not going to. He didn't look like he was going to be ready to get in in a couple of minutes. Conway in the car. There you go. 50-50 hit rate so far. So it'll be Mike and Kamui Kobayashi, unless Jose Maria Lopez is going to go and get changed really pronto. And Mike Conway getting ready to head out in the number seven car. And Toyota have been very quick in free practice. Whether that translates into guaranteed race pace and how the tyre wear battle balances out between the two cars, the Porsches and the Toyotas. It's going to be very interesting to watch tomorrow. Plus what the weather does. Yesterday we had a, v we wasn't even a stiff breeze. It was really quite a strong wind blowing across the circuit. And it was sort of coming over your left shoulder as you were going down the long back straight. Probably not enough to boost your speed much, but enough to be a bit of a trouble maybe for the cars as they got to top speed and into the braking area, because it certainly wasn't giving you a headwind. I think the the wind factor is more of an issue with the, when you're going through corners where it's hitting you on the sides. It'll hit the nose of the car in some corners more than it hits the rear, so you get changing in car balance, not just necessarily corner to corner, but sometimes even through the corner itself. And looking at the flags, it is getting quite gusty again, similar to what it was yesterday afternoon when we all had to rush inside and get our jackets on because it's quite a cold wind as well. Yeah, on Thursday it was warm and sunny. It felt like sort of September maybe. And uh, yesterday it definitely felt all of November and a little bit more. Today, brighter and sunnier. 50% blue sky, which is 150% more than we had yesterday. You can barely see a hand in front of your face at some stage almost. It wasn't quite as foggy as it was in Fuji, but it certainly wasn't that clear. Of the young stars of the season, Thomas Laurent, making quite the name for himself as a sports car driver. And in the G-Drive team, we've also got another young name who we may well be talking a lot more about next year, Leo Roussel, young French driver who has just won the European Le Mans series, again in an LMP2 car. He's been drafted in by G-Drive, for whom he was racing in uh, ELMS. Roman Rusinov being joined by Leo Roussel, making his World Endurance Championship debut with the car, and Nico Muller. Nico Muller will be going out to do the opening qualifying run. Brendan Hartley, that uh, car had, that's Nico Muller, yep. that's in that G-Drive car, as you said, uh, and it's also going to have another driver I raced against. Uh, or raced with, actually, as against was my teammate Lloyd Duval, who's going to be in that car at the next round in Bahrain, but it's uh, Audi driver Nico Muller at the moment. It's sitting in there, just talking about uh, the Porsche of Brendan Hartley. They had a gearbox problem this morning, had to come back to the pits only using the electric motor because the, there was some problem with the drive in gear or whatever.
moment, so they changed the whole gearbox uh, just to be sure, and uh, now that's replaced. And car for Lyndon Hartsnack. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Pit exit is now open. Qualifying for LMP cars has started. Please advise your drivers to the need of respect for track limits. We heard Brendan Hartley being warned by his engineer. I think everybody will be very well aware of what happened in the GT qualifying, that uh, one and done, exceed track limits any corner on any lap and you lose it. There will be no lets, no net calls. Oh, certainly not, not in qualifying. And turn 13 is not going to be a big issue, I don't think, for these cars. I think it's going to be the final corner, turn 16. And now coming down into the hairpin. Accelerating hard out. And this next series, that left that's coming up now, puts so much heat and energy into the right side tyres, especially the front, just continues. And then into the left front, as you now come through the long right hand, and you hear here that uh, the Porsche is going rather slowly. Brendan Hartley at the wheel of this car, just trying to maintain and keep the tyre temperatures down to some sort of level where they can control it to ensure that he get his qualifying lap absolutely right. The thing that he's got to do is to make sure that uh, the hybrid is up and also the tyre pressures are there as well. Okay, tyre temperature on 70, Yeah, 70 degrees. We're talking about getting his tyre temperatures up there. That's a key thing, 70 degrees. They'll come out of the blankets probably about 80 degrees Celsius. A little bit of dropping down of that. However, it's a balance between your tyre pressure, tyre temperature, and also the way the compound is reacting. So Brendan's getting the information on the numbers, but he's feeling it through the steering and the response of the car right now. But uh, this is it. He'll go through the final corner, and uh, then we'll see the lap. So topping out at 270 down the straight, we saw from the GT cars, topping out 272.45 he rushes up towards the line to start his. Should be a single flying lap. Earl Bamba there with a the helmet on, ready to go. So it'll be both Kiwis doing qualifying duty. Nick Tandy is in the number one car. There's Conway now in uh, the seven Toyota. As he dips down into the hairpin, turn uh, five. This is six. his outlap, Conway. So he left a lap after the Porsches. Number eight car yet to leave the garage. Just rolling out now as the number two Porsche, Brendan Hartley, halfway around the lap. And his teammate Nick Tandy behind him. Tandy quicker in the first sector by three tenths of a second. Wow. To Hartley. So Tandy is the car that's on the move, the number one car, which is just behind this car that we're watching. We're now on board with Nick Tandy as he comes through turns nine and ten. And uh, we'll see on the second sector, which is at the exit of the next couple of corners, what it's like at three tenths in his pocket right now. That's a very good first sector by Nick Tandy. He's about uh, seven or eight seconds behind on the track, and that is another... Uh, yeah, Hardly he's gained the tenth of a second yeah. back, so it's still advantage by a uh, tenth and a bit to the one car over the two car, but it's going to be very, very tight, as you would expect. Top speed from Brendan Hartley, 288.8. From Nick Tandy, 285.7. Does that indicate that the number one car might have a little bit more downforce wound onto it? Now Hartley crosses the line, talk about that in a second. 43.3 and a 42.9 by Tandy, so 43.3 and then a 42.9. Tandy was able to gain two tenths in the final sector, and you said he was a bit slower in top speed, but uh, that's top speed, it's how you get there as well, yeah. and you're harvesting and recuperation of the energy bit. Blind in time by Nick Tandy, strong by uh, Hartley, blinding by Tandy. Let's see what Toyotas have got to be able to deliver with that one. I was talking to Nick on the flight out, and he was saying, you've got to have the balance here between low drag for top speed, but you need the grip, and especially because the tyres are more limited than ever before. Uh, this is the, now with Conway on board, he's kind of close to what Hartley was able to do in that first sector, not quite as quick as uh, 
what Tandy was able to do. But this is the area where Toyota struggled, this middle sector. They were very good in first and third, but the middle sector, it looked as if it was a little bit more Porsche's area. In the LMP2 class, Vitaly Petrov currently the man with the fastest lap ahead of Oli Jarvis by exactly a tenth of a second, but third fastest. Oh, Bruno Senna now pops the top of the pile in the 31 at Rebellion. I mean, this could be it. Conway has been quicker than anybody in that middle sector. They've looked like they've got it sorted out, definitely for qualifying. Comes up to the final corner. Is this going to even eclipse Nick Tandy's time? Comes through the final, keeps nice. him well inside the lines. No problem nice with track limits line. there. Crosses, and he doesn't go second. Splits the two Porsches. Conway in second behind Tandy, couple of tenths behind Tandy, and a tenth and a half ahead of Brendan Hartley. And the number eight car with Sebastian Buemi on board. That's, that's uh, quite a bit off in the first sector, though. He's yeah. going to have to make up a lot in this final sector, coming through 12 and 13. Very, very tight in 13 as he accelerates out onto the back straight. And Buemi's not quite quick enough. Three tenths off his teammate Conway in that middle sector. So he's slower by two tenths in the first, three in the second. So this is probably going to drop him out safe, even behind Brendan Hartley. Nick Tandy back in the pits. Brendan Hartley went out before him and he's not come in yet. Now, quite sure why that would be. As uh, no yeah, fourth Buemi place is for the fourth. eight car. You know, Buemi, you can see the look of uh, frustration as he came across the line. The little hand gesture was oh, rats. First and second sector wasn't good enough, final sector was pretty good. But uh, now Andre Lotterer has climbed aboard that car of Nick Tandy. So this is uh, the car that's on the provisional pole right now after one lap. Back to the LMP2 battle. And uh, this is Piquet Jr. And he comes out there second at the moment. We've got a Senna on top, a Piquet in second. 31 and 13, it's the two Viant Rebellion cars ahead of Oli Jarvis in the 38 Jackie Chan DC racing car. There's Jarvis, and who's doing the second run, isn't it? Her... Thomas Laurent going to do the second run in that car. G-Drive car, first driver was Roman Rusinov. Oh, uh, it was Nico Muller, wasn't it? Yes, so Rusinov will do the second. And just a little aside, you said asked why Brendan Hartley was uh, actually staying out. It's because he obviously made a mistake on that first lap and he's now popped himself up into second place uh, with a much better middle sector, but then the best sector of anyone in the final part. And so Hartley is now second, six hundredths of a second behind Andre Lotterer. So it's Porsche 1-2. So it's worth staying out, definitely. That's uh, that's the problem is with the Dunlop tyre and the, everybody's got Dunlops in LMP2. And what they're struggling with is in that change of direction, you come through the long right-handed and then you've got to brake while loaded up onto your left rear tyre and then shift the weight onto the right front tyre. And uh, that's where they've had some stability issues. Also, that's one of the areas where the wind will play a factor because you suddenly get the wind pushing the front of the car and then pulling the rear round as well. up to the final corner. Just gets it over the line, currently ninth. Improves up to third place for Nico Muller. Now, I was suggesting that Roman Rusinov would probably go out and do the lap, but he's rated as gold, and Leo Roussel, the new boy, is only rated as silver, so he is the lowest rated driver, and the, the rules say that he should be the one that goes and does the second lap. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say he's an amateur driver in terms of his capabilities. He might be the lowest rated in terms of uh, the official licensing side of things. Yeah. Mighty 38, the new Mighty 38 with another star of the future, Thomas Laurent. So he pulls it through. That's a good onboard. Just watch this particular shot. 
if we follow it, how much turning they do. They do about two thirds of the circuit is turning left or right. And you see what work the driver has to do, then think of what, what the tyre has to do as well. Andre Lotra on his quick lap. So, very quick turnaround from the number one Porsche. Tandy in fast and handing it over to Lotra. Fresh tyres going on the Toyotas. Number two Porsche is in the pit lane as well after Brendan Hartley's second flying lap was an improvement. There must have been a significant error on his first one. This isn't a fantastic oh, first. Not great catching a P2 car. Wasn't a fantastic first sector by Andre either, and he's now run wide out of Turn 10, missed the apex there. So he's compromised through nine with the traffic and uh, through Turn 10 by just running that little bit wide due to that traffic as well. It's, it's going to be a fantastic middle sector, I don't think, by Lotterer. Now they've got six hundredths of a second to play with here in comparison to their teammates. And this is it, so he had to turn it tight, but then he ran wide in the middle, which meant he couldn't get the apex coming out of the next part. Mathieu Vazivier on his outlap in the number 28 Orica. Lotterer at the end of sector two, didn't get a time from him, so... Sector two, total time 111.89. Yeah, it's just not updated at the moment, but anyways, he now comes across the start and finish line. Three quarters of a second back. Yeah, that was a 43.7 there. Eight tenths. Wide exit from the 38. And the final corner not too wide. This car currently fourth. Slips to fifth on aggregate. Yeah, but Thomas led on there a couple of tenths behind Ollie Jarvis earlier on in the car, so a good lap by, by him there. Earl Bamber is now into the car number two. Oh, and he's had a spin, that's been a bit of traffic there. That's exactly the same place where Andre Lotterer got caught up with the traffic as well, coming through turn eight, long right-hander. And then that change of direction, as I said. Now, that's not necessarily because of that car ahead, uh, because of him being in the wrong place. It's just losing a little bit of the rear aerodynamics as he has now uh, came behind him in the cross wake of it, and you lose the rear and sort of half spun through there. So that tire's going to be slightly damaged as well for Earl Bamber. Well. The uh, stewards have deleted that lap, but then and the that was Andre Lotter's lap. So Lotter, Lotter will have to go and do a second lap in the number one car. Yeah, he's out there right now preparing the lap. In fact, just crossed the start and finish line. So Andre Lotter is uh, on that second lap because the first lap was deleted through track limits at the final corner. I wa was going to ask you, with Kobayashi in the number seven car, they were only 17 hundreds off the fastest time set by Nick Tandy. So they're in with a shot at it as well. And the number two car having to do that extra lap. And now Lotra half spinning and possibly, well, ruining one lap, possibly not doing the tires much good either. So it might sneak in under the wire here. Kobayashi started his quick lap, so has Anthony Davidson. Julian Canal in the 31. Uh, has gone on top of the pile. Look at Nico Lapierre in the 36 Senior Tech Rebellion. Ooh, that was all four wheels off out of the final corner, I think. I was looking at the lap time, so missed yeah. it, and, but it was a quick lap of 49.6, which is only 300 slower than the quickest overall. Got to say, it didn't look like he lifted into turn one. Well, he certainly, if he's run wide, he didn't lift into the final corner either, but uh, Anthony Davidson at the wheel of the Toyota. Mui Kobayashi, fastest first sector of anybody. Yeah, that's a sister car to this one of Anthony Davidson, and, he, and Kobayashi has pushed it massively in the first sector. And that is the better place for the two Toyotas after the first driver stepped out. Now here we're on board with Kobayashi, coming up towards the end of the second sector, and uh, this is a very, very quick lap so far by him. See what he does when he comes through, turns 13 back towards uh, Anthony Davidson at the end of the straight, breaking down into the second last corner. But it's Kobayashi who's quickest yeah. in the middle sector as well. He's Kobayashi ahead. quickest in first and second sector right now. Fastest lap of all so far, by the way, from Andre Lotter's, uh, must be from Nick Tandy's number one car, but... Yeah, I think this that's going to be eclipsed, though. This could be a really good shout from Toyota. Kobayashi. Davidson crosses the line, quick lap equals his teammate's lap by the hundredth. 
However, this is the one we're looking at. Kobayashi as yeah. he comes out the final corner. Here he goes, Kamui Kobayashi lunging for pole. Oh. Both Porsches still with another lap to go. The Kobayashi, 142.526. That's the fastest lap we've seen here in Shanghai. Yep, we thought uh, that the first lap was very, very quick uh, in the Porsche of a 42.9, but that's just been eclipsed 42.5. I don't think either of the Porsches is going to get a second lap out of their tyres that's as quick as that. Mighty 38 will have a lap deleted. That's Thomas Laurent, who's the 38 Jackie Chan DC racing car, currently fourth fastest. You're looking at him here, so he's going to have to go again. Was he all four wheels inside there? Sliding around all over the place. Now, Porsche... Uh, miscued with the number one and the number two car. There's Bruno Senna. Yeah, well, they're looking happy. Not 100% sure they miscued in terms of they had a bit of traffic on one side of things and then there was a slight spin in traffic as well uh, by Earl Bamber. But then that brings up the question whether you go for another set of tyres and use three sets of tyres to try to gain the point for the world for the world championship manufacturers and drivers. I don't think it makes any difference, to be honest with you. But uh, in terms of uh, their desire to have pole position here in China, it might do. Leo Russell on an outlap, fresh tyres on the G-Drive car. So he is having another shot. And that strange-looking person in the Rebellion garage was not Nigel Mansell or a close relative. That is, in fact, Bruno Senna. The curly hair is the giveaway. The tash, though, is wrong on all sorts of levels. November. Movember has a lot to answer for. There's Luke Russell coming through turn three and four. And the rear of the car still gripping up here on that new tyre. However, in the race, we're going to see some decent armfuls of oversteer coming out of that corner. It's hard in the best of times, but uh, towards the end of a double stint, it's going to be increasingly hard for the LMP2 cars. And every time you slide, it takes even more out of the tyre, overheats it even further. So the next corner, you've got even less grip. It's that vicious spiral. And of course, the longer the race goes on, the more pickup, the more debris, the more gravel gets between the tyre and the road. The situations just get worse and worse. Now, can he find anything here? Fastest first sector for the car on this lap from Leo Russell. So it looks like it was worth going out again. Andre Lotter in the inset, still in the number one car. And Earl Bamber still in the number two. Now, you wonder why they're looking left. They're looking, actually, at their uh, engineer, who is obviously talking to them. And natural reaction for the driver is you look to the person that's talking, even though it's over the radio, yeah. uh, your head just goes to where that is. <laughs> and so I'm sure the discussion there is, what do we do? Because Kobayashi's lap time is there, but the average is uh, actually a lot closer. Number one Porsche, 4,400s behind on average, so he's going to have to, Lotter would have to find another half a second. That means throwing another set of tyres at it. Earl Bamba, 0.66 behind. 26 car comes to the line as Andre Lotter gets out of the Porsche. They will not put more tyres on the number one car. A minute and 49. Don't know why Earl Bamba's staying in. He's not going to get round to complete it to start a lap. Yeah, he's not, but uh, that, le that lap by Leo Russell was very good, but it yeah. puts them in second place, and uh, that by a quarter of a second as well, as now the 28 car has got Mathieu Xavier in there. Yeah. A bit of congratulations in the Toyota garage. Job done. Yeah, number Kobayashi. seven car, Kamui Kobayashi, Mike Conway. Looks like they have pole position in the LMP1 class. And the strange looking combination <laughs> of, of yeah. curly hair and Bromi Tash on Bruno Senna and Julian Canal on the right there. They will start from pole in LMP2. The number 31 at Viance Rebellion ahead of the 26 G Drive car. And uh, Leo Roussel, that second lap that he put in, first and second, sec second sectors were the fastest for the car. It was only the final sector where he just didn't have enough left to try and challenge for pole position. Third in the LMP2 class is the other Viant Rebellion car. And there you can see the track records from 2016. And that's best lap in qualifying, one minute 42.5.
4.26. Fastest Toyota lap this morning was that 44.888. Yeah, that's with a little bit of fuel on board, so therefore it's not a surprise. Leo Roussel still out there, is he continuing on a lap? I wasn't actually no. watching as comes into the mist. Flying in. Ah, Mathieu Vexavi is the other person that's Ooh. out onto the circuit. He's just had a lap time deleted for track limits at turn well, 16, the, the well, final well, corner. Well, yeah. So it's not the first time I don't think we've said that in qualifying. No. And uh, Mathieu Vexavi is now the chequered flag as he now comes into the final corner. This is where he's got to keep it tight. Oh. Nice and tight. That was so close. Was that close? Was there chalk dust? He takes the chequered flag. There are no other chances. Well, it moves him up from last to not last. Yeah, second last there yeah. for that car. So eighth overall in the class for Vixavi, but uh, certainly wasn't going to challenge these guys' rebellion. Pole position, very happy, and uh, they've delivered. They've got stronger and stronger, certainly over the course of the last couple of races, and the overall pole position was delivered actually by this man, Camille Kobayashi. Conway set it up, but uh, then Kobayashi hit it out to the park. Yep. Jose Maria Lopez will join them in the race lineup. They will be the three men whose car starts from pole position. Toyota number seven ahead of Porsche number one. And then the number eight Toyota lining up third on the grid ahead of the number two Porsche. So it'll be Porsche's line astern alongside Toyota's line astern with the number seven car on pole position. Violent Rebellion cars will be line astern, 31 ahead of 13. And between the two of them, number 26 G Drive ahead of the 38 Jackie Chan DC racing car. David Cheng in the other Jackie Chan DC racing car will be the final LMP2 starter. So it was clean laps as well as quick laps that in the end decided qualifying in all the classes. Any driver that made a mistake cost his car a chance to start at the front. Let's hear from Toyota number seven driver, Kamui Kobayashi. Well, Kamui Kobayashi yet again proving that you are quick out there, especially in qualifying. Seven's been quick for most of the sessions so far this weekend. Can you translate that into a win in the race? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think uh, the car was really good through the week. Uh, since from the, the practice one, we feel quite confident with the car. And uh, I mean, long time we haven't been so strong from practice, so I think that we were pretty confident. Originally, I was not uh, planning to go quarry. But uh, I think that I was feeling good with car, so we just after practice we decided to go myself to qualify, and uh, we made it. It's a good lap time to, to have the, the pole position, which is happy. And of course, obviously, I think the team made a really great step and did a great job, and I'm so happy. And of course, I think this is uh, you know it's just quarry, but at least I think the, to start in the pole position, which is great. Thank you very much. Happy boys in the number seven Toyota camp, and they'll be equally happy boys, I'm sure, in the number 31 Violent Rebellion team. They didn't quite lock out the front row in LMP2. They will start fifth and seventh on the grid, first and third in class, the two Rebellion cars with 31 ahead of 13. Anybody thinking of growing a moustache for any reason other than Movember? That picture of Bruno Senna is your advice right there. I, I leave it with you. So uh, qualifying, no dramas in the end with the uh, broken bit of concrete. So hopefully that should all be good for the race. Let's get down to the Viant Rebellion garage. Louise Beckett has hot-footed it breathlessly to meet them. Well, both Julian and Bruno are here. Sorry, I've lost my breath from running. Uh, but I have to speak to Bruno, don't I, with that lovely Mo. Yeah, it's uh, for November, so it's for a good reason. Um, but yeah, fantastic. Our first poll, really when it counts, uh, especially when it counts that uh, 38 is uh, P4. So really, the more cars we can put between ourselves and them will be important. Juju did a great job. The team did a great job. The car was fantastic for quality. It's been fantastic most, most of the time, but here I think we really nailed it. And um, yeah, it was a nice lap. Everyone's talking about tyres, so can yours last it out for the six hours? I think so. Uh, looking at our our bag on the practice session, it looks very good. But you know, the race is long tomorrow. A lot lots to happen during the race, and uh, we need to be humble. But for sure, we start from the best position possible, and then tomorrow it's part. Look forward and try to build a gap. 
Thanks very much. And if anyone has any nicknames for the Mo, then uh, please bring, uh, tweet them in. Nigel Mansell, I think, is yeah. uh, the nickname that you've got for the man there. I think so. so we'll call it our Nige. It is it's, our uh, Nige. Louise uh, sporting her superwoman. Uh, so she's now Wonder driving the woman. and running down yeah. the pit lane. We need to get one of those uh, red Baywatch, you know, sort of surfboardy things that they use. That's that's that the only thing that's missing. I think there. we need to get you out running the track later on tonight. We'll but there it is that. that pole position winning car that uh, delivered a lap time of 42.5. I don't think that many people are going to beat that today. Qualifying all about producing the lap when it matters. And here in Shanghai, you only get one shot out of the tire. If you mess it up, then suddenly you are on the back foot. And everybody understood that going in. The problem is there are a couple of places where you really need to try and pinch an inch. Thomas Floor did a little too much of that. Lost his best lap and had to go again. He'll start third. Dempsey Proton's Porsche. 77 car, second in the GTE AM class, but it was Pedro Lamy and Paul Dallalana in the 98 Aston Martin. Their championship battle aided. They're one point closer to the top of the pile. In the GTE AM class, again, the Ferraris didn't have the best of it and may not have made any friends at Ford. After they left the pits just as the Fords were on their quick lap. The 51 car goes third, 92 Porsche second, but it is double GT pole. GTE Pro also going to Aston Martin, Nicky Team and Marco Sorensen. And the prototype qualifying, the same rules applied, but they were very much aware that a number of GT drivers had had fast laps disqualified for even the minor transgression of one corner outside track limits. So everybody had to be on their metal. Third place went to the number 13 Violent Rebellion car. A second sterling effort from Leo Roussel kept the 26 G-Drive car in second place, splitting the Rebellions. But a first pole in LMP2, uh, Julian Canal and Bruno Senna doing the driving in the 31 Violent Rebellion. In the top category, both the number one Porsche, fastest lap from Nick Tandy, and the number two Porsche had problems with traffic, spins, and that left the door open. The number eight Toyota of Anthony Davidson went third, the number one Porsche second, but it's pole for the seventh Toyota. A bright sunny afternoon here but the temperatures reflect the fact that it is November and not late summer it is a little cool and breezy and maybe those cooler temperatures and the weaker autumn sunshine will mean that track temperature won't be much of a factor tomorrow the only problem is tire wear is still going to be on everybody's minds that will bring us through qualifying to the six hours of Shanghai, the penultimate race in the 2017 FIA World Endurance Championship. All that remains is to do the race and to find out who can manage their tyre wear best of all. Confirmation of the results as they are at the end of qualifying. Toyota Porsche, Toyota Porsche in LMP1. Violent Rebellion ahead of G-Drive, Violent Rebellion ahead of Jackie Chan DC Racing. The Senior Tech Alpine car, only fifth fastest, ahead of the better of the two Manor cars. The number 24 car also had problems in qualifying. And David Chang's Jackie Chan DC Racing number 37 car, the local team, local lineup, is in 13th place, ahead of our GTE pro pole sitting Aston Martin in the Pro class, and the GTE pole sitting Aston Martin in the AM class, starting 22nd, that 98 car. Well, yesterday was visibility very reduced. Thursday and today, it's been bright and pretty clear. Could go either way tomorrow. Temperatures aren't going to be scorching, but as long as it is clear and dry, then everybody will be happy with that. Alan McNish, 
final thoughts after qualifying. Did we see anything really that shocked us other than a couple of little errors from the drivers under pressure? Uh, n not necessarily. I think the thing that uh, sets it up well is that uh, you've got the GTM guys uh, and GT Pro. The, the uh, car there is also on a different tyre. The Aston Martins run the Dunlops, whereas everyone else runs Michelin. So we'll see how that plays out tomorrow. But uh, in terms of the LMP1, positively surprised by Kobe Ashi's lap because that was a lap that you'll go home and remember. Yeah, he really pulled out a very big performance. The GT class, Aston Martin with the pace over one lap. We'll have to see who comes out on top after six hours. And this will likely set up a championship deciding battle in the final race in Bahrain. But there is plenty of racing to do here in Shanghai. Join us for all the action on Sunday morning.